Hi, this is Carl Leopson, your instructor for SERP 590 Single Case Research Design at the University of Arizona. And this week we are talking about comparison designs. Let's start off with this quote by James Johnston, the noted behavioral scholar, as our text says, who wrote that comparative designs are the bane of the applied literature. They often lead to inappropriate inferences with poor generality, based on improper evidence, gathered in the support of the wrong questions, thus wasting the field's limited experimental resources. He sounds like a very angry researcher. Um, I will say that comparison designs are really complicated, and I'm going to show you why in this video. So, so far in this course, we've looked at demonstration designs, things like AB designs, withdrawal designs, multiple baseline and multiple probe designs that are just meant to be able to show that a single intervention works. And in research, that's often what we do as researchers. We go out and we look and we say, does this intervention work? As a practitioner, you're going to want to do that too. It's not very often you're going to want to compare interventions as a practitioner. However, if you did want to compare interventions, you would use a comparison design. And the types of comparison designs that are described in the book and that are used most often, even though it's not done very often, um, are alternating treatments designs, adapted alternating treatments, multi-treatment designs, and parallel treatments. So let's just look at what this might be like. Okay, so if you are comparing interventions, you might be comparing things like, or in the article we're going to read this week, um, situations where you're comparing a kid wearing no weighted vest, a weighted vest, or wearing a vest with no weights in it. That's one of the articles we'll read, and this is the graph from that. We'll return to this at the end of this presentation. There's another study that we can take a look at, um, comparing unmarked baseballs with marked baseballs, with the notion being that, that maybe we if we put a mark on a baseball and we're throwing curveballs at a batter, that batter can learn to better read how to hit a curveball because the balls are marked. Um, and then another study that we'll read is about, about choice, about client choice in, in um, intervention, not an intervention, actually in terms of, I think, activity. So client choice of activity. But you could compare client choice of activity to parent choice of activity. And then another article we'll look at is about exer gaming. And they didn't just want to say, let's look and see if exer gaming um, is effective. They wanted to compare it to no PE versus a regular PE period versus exer gaming. So you can see why these are these are kind of compelling because they're looking at who wins the intervention contest. Um, but let's look at why there are so many challenges with setting up a study like this. Before we do that, let's let's take an even closer look at the types of comparisons you might make. So you might compare competing interventions. Right? So two interventions, and you don't know which one's better. Um, you might compare an established intervention with something that's brand new on your plate. Okay, I've got this one I use all the time. Somebody tells me this one's better. They're similar, but let me try them out to see which one really works better. You might be refining an intervention. So you can use comparison designs to look at things like... Um, should I, if I change the sequence of these things in my intervention, does it matter? 
if I provide five sessions of coaching, is that different from an intervention where I provide 10 sessions of coaching? Um, and for inter understanding the interactions of contextual variables. Okay, so if I set up an intervention um, with that's done in a different setting with different numbers of sessions um, and different reinforcers, is that whole package different from this other intervention? And can I separate separate out elements of those packages? Okay. Again, these studies that you'll have an opportunity to read do some of those things. So why are there so many problems with trying to do comparison designs? So this is an example of a comparison design that is a multi-treatment, right? So you've got one intervention and they're following it with another intervention. So what could happen is something called a carryover effect. That means you have baseline and then you implement intervention B and you start intervention C, but your clients are still reacting to intervention B and what they learned in intervention B. And so intervention C seems to work, but then it doesn't work as well because they're not getting pieces from intervention B anymore. So it just gives you this screwed up data here where you're carrying over from one intervention and the elements of that intervention to another. It's not like lights on, lights off. It's more like um, the reinforcer, somebody is, is expecting that reinforcer and it's still holding, okay? Another thing that can happen is sequence effects. And that's why when you look at these studies that we'll read later um, in this week, you'll see that they'll try to mix things up. So it kind of helps you get over that concern of carryover effects too. You can see what's going on if you mix things up, if you put one intervention first and then the other and then you flip them backwards, or if you have a whole other person or set of three or four clients where you put what put A intervention first and then B intervention and next time you put B intervention and A intervention and then A and then B and then B and then A or you randomly distribute them. So here's an example for sequencing effects where they have baseline and then B along and then baseline and then the C intervention. But then they find that if they put the B intervention and then they add the C intervention, there's something about that B intervention that prepares people to do really well under the C intervention. Maybe there was some, the B intervention provides some additional understanding for the client of how the reinforcer works or provides them with some skill. Um, and so that the two interventions together work better than just the one, right? So that's another issue with trying to compare interventions. Another threat is alternation effects. So another type of, of comparison design that we'll look at in just a second are these alternating treatment effects. Instead of putting one intervention after another, you have you have a day here where you have the baseline type of intervention and then you apply intervention A the next day and the next day you apply intervention B and then you stay with intervention B on the next day but then the next day you go back to baseline the day after that you go to intervention A. <clears throat> what can happen here is they've tried to randomly distribute these interventions just like one right after another, okay? Um, what can happen in alternating so quickly is that, again, just like in sequencing effects, your, your client doesn't recognize 
that the intervention has changed, right? Or the conditions have changed. And when you alternate that rapidly, things are carrying over from one to the next, all right? So I alluded to this notion of multi-treatment versus alternating treatment. So that's, these are the basic two types of comparison designs. So in alternating treatments, in alternating treatment designs, you literally have one intervention one day, one intervention the next day, and you just flip them back and forth, flip them back and forth. Um, that can work great if you have a reversible behavior, okay? Remember our lights on, lights off study? Our goofy fake reading study where I turn, have low light and then high levels of light? This is exactly what you can do in this case, right? I have a session one day where I have low light, next session high levels of light, I randomly stick with the high levels of light, then low, low, and then high, high, low, high, low. We can flip that back and forth because the reading behavior is absolutely going to change based on the level of light. Okay. But let's say you've got something where you're teaching a skill and that you can't flip back and forth as easily, okay? Um, or you think something needs more time for a student or a client to be engaged so that they understand or you're gonna get some kind of carryover effects too quickly switching back and forth. In that case, you do something called a multi-treatment design and it looks a whole lot like a multiple, uh, looks like just an AB, okay? But it's ABC. So in this case, they had baseline, they had video feedback, they had the addition of um, self-monitoring, video feedback, they go back to, and then self-monitoring, okay? So in one case, it's just one day on, day off, day on, day off, but randomly mixed and randomly sequenced. For a multi-treatment design, it's longer term. You have a long baseline, you have a long set of sessions, of one treatment, then you switch to a number of sessions of another treatment, and then go back, all right? So it's on off, on off, on off, versus long sets of sessions. So let's take a little closer look at alternating treatments designs, these things where you can go on off, on off, on off. They're actually pretty cool. I've used them before in some of my work. Um, and there are lots of different ways you can put them together, and this is, this is where it starts to get fun if you're a design nerd in single case research to come up with your own designs and ways of implementing. Um, so let's look at this first one. In this first one, there's a baseline, then they compare the two, and then they do this thing that's often done um, in single case research near the end of a study where you take the best one and you put it by itself just to be sure that it really works alone and there's not some interference, all right? That there's not something about providing the other treatment that makes this one work better. And then they did probes at the, a probes at the end of the best one. Another way you can put this together is just to have baseline, right, collecting on your dependent variable, and then throw in the comparison and then be done with your study, one treatment, against another. Here is an example of not even having a baseline. So it could be that's one of the coolest things about alternating treatments designs is you don't have to have a baseline. You can just go treatment for treatment. Okay, So here you're just comparing one treatment against another. What's great about that? You get to start right away. right? It's a lot like a classroom situation um, it's a lot like somebody coming to you, a client comes to you, you don't want to spend weeks or sessions and sessions collecting baseline data on a client. You want to get going with them. And so you could start with one intervention versus another session by session. Okay, 
and then have the best one alone. Or you could just compare and just leave out everything. You could just have one session, one type of intervention, one session, another type. Down here at the bottom is a multi-element design where you pick apart your interventions and you, you deliver those intervention bits separately. I'm not going to go into that too much. That's, that's just crazy town in terms of setting things up. Probably the simplest up here is just this comparison and, and makes the most sense in a client type situation or a clinical situation. So this video is going longer than usual, um, but I wanted to shoot it all together because this is just all one thing. These, these comparison designs, I don't want to break it into too many parts. Um, let's go back over with one of these studies that I think some of you are going to want to read because um, in the face of, in the, in the field of applied behavior analysis, there's a lot of skepticism of things like weighted vests um, and uh, sensory therapies. And this is one of those studies that you'll have the opportunity to read. So this is what kind of study? Is it multi-treatment or is it alternating treatments? Let's look at it. There's a baseline, and then one day they have the weighted vest, another day they have the weighted vest, then they go to an un then they go to uh, the I believe they go to baseline again, and then they go to a unweighted vest. So you could see they're going session by session. That's an alternating treatments. They're alternating the treatments rapidly rather than doing multi, multiple treatments in blocks, okay? What kinds of threats can there be to a design like this? Carryover. It could be um, that once they give the kid a weighted vest for two days, for two sessions, and then they try to go back to baseline, this kid has developed, learned something about themselves or about the weighted vest or the sensory input that's going to carry over to the next session. Um, same thing if they provide an unweighted vest. Okay, it could be some carryover. Sequencing effects. They've tried to deal with the sequence sequencing effects here by randomly mixing it up. Right. So there's a couple days of unweight of weighted, and then a day of baseline, and then they go to an, a couple days of an unweighted vest, and they go back to weighted, and they just kind of mix it up randomly. And then alternation effects. I don't know how they could deal with alternation effects here. They're randomly alternating, but one thing they're doing is um, they are going not with always with alterate, alternation. They're not always switching back they're sometimes doing two in a row, okay? So can you use one of these in your research? Yeah, if you're comparing independent variables um, and then if you have, that the simplest way to do it is to, to think if you are comparing independent variables, you look at your dependent variable, you use a multi-treatment design if you are um, dealing with a dependent variable that can't be reversed um, and you use an alternating treatment if you can rapidly alternate your intervention and your dependent variable, your behavior is likely to go back to baseline. Okay? As I say every week, this is just the basics. The book is fabulous. Go skim through the book. Look through the book. There's lots of cool stuff, lots of great graphs, lots of better explanation of this whole, this whole process of using comparison designs. Um, so I hope that you'll find this, uh, this whole comparison design issue interesting. It is pretty nerdy. Um, and we will have one more set of designs to look at next week. And then we are on to graphing. All right. I'll see you then. See you later.